Up until this point, we've spent plenty of time talking about the Lakers offense, defense, and what Redick might be doing differently with their team, but how about the young players and rookies in their team? After all, they have been playing a majority of the second half, and especially during the fourth quarter, so there definitely is plenty of time to evaluate them and get a good look at what they have shown so far or maybe how they have improved throughout the summer. And that's what we're going to do today. Evaluate what we have seen from them so far, with all three of their currently rookies that they have under contract being Dalton Connect, Ronnie James, and then Armel Traore, and then Colin Kasten being a two-way contract who is kind of a rookie yet, and then Quincy Olivari as well, with many believing that Olivari should be or will find his way onto their team in some form or fashion by the end of training camp. But before we get too far into it, be sure to check out G2A.com for the best deals in your favorite games, credits, and everything digital entertainment. You can check them out in the video description down below. But now getting back to our topic, and again, we're going to evaluate their rookies along with Colin Castleton and Quincy Olivari. But beginning with the most unproven and youngest one between them, with that being Bronny James. And although up until this point he definitely has been underwhelming, you gotta remember that he just turned 20 years old and only played one year of college or 25 games total of college, along with having a major health issue in between all that. I know he's a big name, obviously from being LeBron's son, but we gotta give him time here and not fully evaluate him from only preseason and summer league. With that being said though, he is definitely nowhere near being NBA ready quite yet. Has appeared in all three of their preseason games so far, but only averaging 0.7 points per game, shooting 9.1% from the field, 0% from three, and then having a team low minus 40 plus minus rating. So obviously not good and really showing that he's not ready for the NBA level even during the fourth quarter when not many NBA level rotation players are in the game. So definitely has a lot of work to do, but we do gotta give him time yet. And up until this point, I think the only good thing that I can point out about him in regard to being an NBA player is that he does seem to be athletic enough for the NBA level. Can mostly keep up on defense, both individually and when playing team defense, but the other part is definitely learning team defense for him can tend to get lost at times and doesn't really know where to be on the court during every situation. So if he can eventually figure that out, he could be an above average level defender at the bare minimum. Between his athletic ability and overall defensive skill set, he definitely could be. And even when he does get beat on defense, he does tend to recover fairly well. Whether it's in the half court setting or full court setting, he can tend to get back on defense fairly well and even block a shot after getting beat on defense in the half court setting so definitely athletic enough and has shown that fairly well throughout preseason if you ask me. But other than that, it's definitely not looked very good for him. Looks completely lost offensively at times and honestly a majority of the time. And then having an unreliable shot, whether you're talking about 3 point shooting or mid range shooting, it's simply not there yet for him. I don't blame him again only being 20 years old and a lot to take in for him. Whether it's been sharing the court with LeBron, the media attention, or really everything combined, it's been a lot for Bronny, so I'm not going to over critique him or really do anything too crazy right now. Hasn't looked good, but give him some time yet. Moving on though for number 2, here we have Dalton Connect, and by far the most heavily utilized rookie so far, actually leading their team in minutes per game during preseason, about 27 of them per game, and field goal attempts per game, 12.7 of them attempted per game and 3 point shots attempted per game too with 8 of them. So definitely a lot of usage especially for a rookie and it really tells you about how they're trying to incorporate him into their team and what they're actually planning to do at the NBA level during the regular season. He's really projecting to be within the rotation and they're lining him up to be a pretty big part of it too. In my opinion, or really not my opinion but if you watch the game, he's probably had more plays thrown up for him than any role player on their team. Obviously correlated with his amount of playing time, but still very noteworthy if you ask me. Even as the rookie is demanding constant attention for the defense, I mean you kind of have to with his 3 point shooting and overall being a dangerous off ball threat, can't lose track of him because if you do, he'll find a way to get open. Whether it's from the 3 point line or cutting back door to the rim, he definitely knows how to do it and read the court fairly well for a rookie. That's been one of my favorite parts about him so far has read the court fairly well to get open for himself or even with the ball in his hands can actually find open teammates too. Averaging 3 assists per game so far and actually averaging more assists compared to turnovers per game so that's definitely a good thing for a 
not even a combo guard, but more of a wing player like Dalton Connect, and that's been a highlight for him if you ask me. Not many rookies read the court that well, and definitely not this early, so definitely a good thing to see from Dalton Connect. Now, even though his shooting efficiency hasn't been that great, only about 40% from the field and 21% from three, I think it's more about him getting comfortable and actually running the plays that he likely will be running within their offense. Again, there have been plenty run directly for him, and it's been really good to see that he's not being passive. He'll take the shot when he's open, or even when the play that's being run really dictates on him shooting the ball. He's not afraid to take them, and Redick has really pushed him to take them too. Often saying and really over and over that he's not mad at Connect if he'll miss the shot. If anything, he'd probably be more mad if Connect wouldn't take the shot. So I don't think we can fully evaluate his shooting efficiency up until this point. He'll play much more off the ball during the regular season and be a catch and shoot guy for them, but he will have to fill that movement shooter role at times, so they're trying to get him comfortable within that role right now. So in my opinion, he looks like a day one rotation player. Obviously will be ups and downs for him being a rookie, but probably way less than than you would like to get from a normal, non-lottery pick rookie. So in my opinion, plenty of good here with Dalton Connect. Moving on though, for Colin Castleton, probably under the most pressure of their current two-way contract players in my opinion, and definitely with the emergence of Quincy Olivari. And Castleton is playing okay, albeit nothing great that has really made him stand out so far, averaging 11.2 minutes per game, playing in all three of their games so far, averaging then 2 points per game, 3 rebounds per game, 2.7 assists per game, and 1 block per game. Overall solid, but not anything really that great. And in my opinion, rim protection has probably been the highlight for him so far. Being a fairly underwhelming player in regard to athletic ability, I think he's actually shown improvement around the rim, can't be too mad with him blocking over 3 shots for 36 minutes, and definitely has gotten better at knowing where to be on the court. With him not being athletic again, he's definitely got to be in good position on defense to not only block shots, but contest around the rim and be in the right spot within their defensive game plan. I think that he's taken a minor step forward in that regard, and it has been good to see. Apart from that though, playmaking is and probably always will be the main highlight of his game for me anyways. A really underrated playmaker, and definitely an underrated skill for a big man. They can kind of run their offense through him in the high post, probably not the NBA level quite yet, but they did throw a summer league, and they have briefly throughout preseason too, and for the most part it's been completely fine. Again, averaging 2.7 assists per game, or nearly 9 of them per 36 minutes. That's very good for a big man, and it really shows you his ability to read the court as a big, and find the open player both around the rim and from the 3 point line too. Unfortunately for him though, the problem is, and probably always will be athletic ability and strength around the rim for Colin Castleton. Now he can block a shot if a player comes directly at him, but he's not great at recovering from the weak side on defense not really quick enough nor athletic enough vertically or laterally to get there. So that's a problem for him and definitely would be at the NBA level. Again, has shown minor improvement, but mostly from a team defense and positioning standpoint, which don't get me wrong, that's very good. But athletically and overall from that standpoint, not really good and always probably will plague him. And then with that, not very switchable on defense, heavily reliant on playing drop coverage, and that's shown up both throughout preseason, throughout Summer League, and during the G League too. And then on offense, not being a lob threat, and that's a big part of being a center nowadays. If you're not a 3 point shooting big, then you gotta be a vertically spacing big, aka a lob threat. And with Castleton not really being a vertical spacer or a floor spacer, it's really difficult to use him offensively, especially at the NBA level. Again, love his playmaking ability, but that probably won't be heavily utilized at the NBA level if you'd ever get there, so it's definitely a big problem for him. Moving on though, for Armel Traore, slowly but surely getting used to the NBA. Did come over from over in Europe, so took him a little while throughout Summer League and preseason to get used to it, but I think he's finally catching up. Now he unfortunately did kind of get hurt, he has right hand swelling and that probably will keep him out through the remainder of preseason but I think they probably have shown enough to retain his two-way spot. Currently averaging about 7 minutes per game, 2.5 points per game, 2.5 rebounds per game, and shooting 57.1% for the field. Not anything great or overall too much to take away here, but he has shown a little bit of promise on both ends of the court. Strong rebounder and decent rim protector, and that does allow him to play at either power forward or center despite lacking a little bit of height. Good athlete and has a good wingspan and overall instincts too, 
especially in regard to grabbing rebounds, so that definitely plays into his hand. Apart from that though, a good rim runner that definitely works hard too. After a rebound, he immediately looks to run the floor or push the ball too. And even with the ball after a rebound, he can bring the ball up the court. There is one play against the Milwaukee Bucks that, after grabbing a defensive rebound, he took the ball up the floor himself and then actually scored the ball too. It was very impressive for a power forward center hybrid and definitely for a rookie one too that went undrafted. So definitely good things to take away from Armel Traore. A bit disappointing that he's hurt and likely will miss the rest of the preseason, but again, I think that he's done enough to both retain and has earned his two-way contract. And with that being said, now finishing up with Quincy Olivari, the new fan favorite training camp player for them, and especially after exploding for an 11 point fourth quarter comeback against Milwaukee, leading their team during the fourth quarter with 11 points in only 9 minutes, shooting 3 for 4 from 3, having 5 rebounds, and having a team high plus minus rating a plus 20 in only 9 minutes again too. Definitely a breakout game for him, but then again it was only one game for him, and he'll now have to build off of it and show that it wasn't a fluke, or that it was not simply a one-time thing that he really can't replicate, both offensively and defensively too. But luckily for him, they do have three preseason games remaining and he likely will get significant run during them, probably even during the first half with how good he looked during that fourth quarter. And with that being said, he'll definitely have to show more defense and three-point shooting, aka 3 and D ability, that he showed during that Milwaukee game. He picked up guys full court in that game on defense and he'll likely be asked to do that again and overall look like a good defensive guard that can both defend the 1 and 2. That would work in his favor and definitely lead to more playing time throughout preseason and maybe a spot on their team through a two-way contract. Redick has both pointed out and praised his overall defense and hard work, so that's something if maybe not the biggest thing for Olabari going forward. And then for three-point shooting, we know he can do it. He looked great during that Milwaukee game shooting 3 for 4 from beyond the arc, then shooting about 41% during his final year of college and being a high volume and quick trigger three-point shooter. So if he could combine that defense with more reliable, high volume 3 point shooting, I think that would earn him a clear spot with a 2 way contract on their team, likely replacing Colin Castan unless he would have a breakout game too, but I like what I've seen from Quincy Olivari and he's definitely been a standout for them amongst their young players. Again, he will have to earn a spot through a 2 way contract, they have a completely full 15 man roster and all 15 are completely guaranteed too, so will have to be through a 2 way contract. But overall here, apart from Bronny James, who despite not looking very good is only 20 years old again, every one of the Lakers young players and rookies have looked solid to very good at the top, especially in the case of Dalton Connect and Quincy Olabari. And with that being said, what do you guys think? Which of them have been the quote unquote standouts in your opinion? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But I think that'll pretty much do it for this one. And if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to drop a like, hit that subscribe button if you have not already, and turn on notifications so you never miss out when I upload a video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.